Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Due to the recent events between Rojava, US and Turkey, one of our videos has been delayed. However, we recently dropped the video explaining the recent events briefly and now we present another video listing 10 times when US betrayed the Kurds in history. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the delayed video and further click on the notification button so that you stay alerted whenever we upload future videos. This list will go with a chronological order. Now let's start with number 10, the Treaty of Lausanne. Like many other nationalistic struggles, the Kurdish one started around late 1800. However, Kurdistan was during this time ruled by the Ottoman Empire who would collapse after fighting on the losing side of World War I. The Kurds, who saw an empire falling apart, also saw their chance to gain independence. The 1920 Treaty of Severus completely dissolved the Ottoman Empire, including what is now Turkey. In the treaty, Kurdistan was mentioned as a future state. However, the Turks fought back making enough trouble so that America would support a new treaty in 1923, the Treaty of Lausanne. This treaty allowed the British and French to carve off present-day Iraq and Syria for themselves. However, the Kurds were left out. This is seen as America's first and smallest betrayal of the Kurds, even though it triggered a 100-year and still ongoing war between the Kurds and Arabs, Persians and Turks. The relations between Kurds and Americans were not evolved at all to be considered as a full betrayal. The betrayal in this event would in this case be the British who actively fought and crushed the short-lived kingdom of Kurdistan within the Iraqi borders during the early 1920s. Number 9. Delivery of Napalm Weapons After World War II, the United States gradually assumed the British role as main colonial power in the Middle East. During the rule of Iraqi President Abdel Karim Qasim, who ruled in Iraq between 1958 and 1963, America armed the Kurdish Peshmerga forces who fought against the Iraqi regime. America later on supported the Iraqi coup against Qasim in 1963, which would put a young Saddam Hussein to power. When this happened, America immediately cut off the aid to the Kurds and powered up the new Iraqi government with napalm weapons to be used against the Kurds in the north. Shortly afterwards, Saddam Hussein as vice president secured many oil fields in Iraqi occupied Kurdistan using weapons from the United States. Number 8. Ignoring the Kurds During the 1970s, the Iraqi government had moved close to the Soviet Union. The United States president of that time, Richard Nixon, and his close advisor, Henry Kissinger, hatched a plan with Iran to arm Iraqi Kurds. The plan back then was to not make the Kurds powerful, since Iran was afraid that this would trigger the Kurds in Iran to uprising. The plan was only to make the Iraqi government bleed. Later on, in 1975, the Shah of Iran and Saddam Hussein signed a deal between the countries in the famous Algar Agreement, which included the immediate termination of aiding the Kurds. US supported this agreement and the Iraqi regime moved north and slaughtered thousands of Kurds. The Kurds turned to the American allies who ignored them completely. When Kissinger was questioned about this, he coldly answered, Covert action should not be confused with missionary work. Number 7. A Genocide During the 1980s, the Iraqi government performed a fully bloody genocide against the Kurds. In this, Iraq used a lot of chemical weapons which they got from several Western countries, America being one of them. President Reagan and his administration was well aware of Saddam's use of nerve gas but didn't do anything to stop it, since they supported the damage Iraq did towards Iran in the Iraq-Iran war. Even when the idea of imposing sanctions towards Iraq 
was put on the table, America opposed the suggestion. American media reportedly also played a role in the betrayal. It is said that a Washington Post reporter tried to publish a photo of a Kurdish man killed by chemical weapons. However, he was stopped by his editor who said, who will care? Number 6. Refusing to help As America bombed Iraq during the Gulf War in 1991, George H.W. Bush called out for the Iraqi people to take matters into their own hands to force Saddam Hussein, the dictator, to step aside. Iraqi Shias in the south and Kurds in the north did exactly as the American president wanted. It turned out that Bush wasn't completely honest with neither the Kurds or the Shias. Saddam Hussein's regime fought back and slaughtered many rebels as well as civilians in his revenge. A lot of Kurds died while US did nothing. Number 5. The Good Kurds and the Bad Kurds After global pressure, America joined the British and French who already started a project to protect the suffering Kurds and Shias. During President Clinton's time as president, the Iraqi Kurds became known as the Good Kurds since they were fighting against Iraq, a new American enemy. Meanwhile, the Kurds in Turkish-occupied Kurdistan also rose up against the government of Turkey and urged for help. But these were fighting an American ally and became known as the Bad Kurds. The Kurds in Baku didn't receive any help at all. On the contrary, America sent Turkey a huge amount of weaponry which Turkey used, with American knowledge, to murder over 10,000 Kurds and destroyed thousands of villages at the same time as US were helping the Kurds in Iraq. Number 4. American Thumbs Up Before the Iraq War in 2003, there was a huge debate in the States about why America should invade Iraq or not. One of the side topics was the Kurds. While Christopher Hitches thought that the invasion has to be done to help the Kurds, Daniel Ellsberg said that America would just end up betraying the Kurds again. A debate between Ellsberg and Hitches about an eventual future betrayal of the Kurds started. Ellsberg said that it would happen even though he didn't want it to, while Hitches said that it won't happen again. Of course, Ellsberg was right. After the Iraq war, as the Kurds in northern Iraq got more freedom and independence, Turkey became nervous. In 2007, America gave Turkey thumbs up to start the first heavy bombing campaigns against Kurds of Iraqi occupied Kurdistan and since then the bombing has just continued and continued. Number 3. The Referendum After a long war with the Islamic State, the terror organization was almost defeated. KRG and its president Masoud Barzani went for the long-awaited plan of implementing the Kurdistan independence referendum. In the defeat of the Islamic State, American warplanes had been the number one ally with the Peshmerga forces of Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan. However, according to rumors, the United States had asked the KRG administration to wait another year for it. However, the president of KRG, who already had moved the referendum several times, felt that this was the perfect moment for it. The referendum was held in 25th of September 2017, and the aftermath of it led to intervention from both Turkey and Iran, as well as military invasion from the Iraqi government. The Kurdish people expected American backup, and even though an American plane were observing from the air, nothing happened as Iraqi army took city after city, while Peshmerga was divided and once again betrayed. Number 2. Ignoring Afrin In January 2018, Turkey started their Operation Olive Branch, which was a full-scale invasion towards the Kurdish city of Afrin located in Rojava. 
Afrin is located in western Rojava and these parts were not guarded by American military which made it possible for Turkey to start their invasion towards western Rojava. The Kurds who alongside the Americans had successfully fought the Islamic State expected some backup from the Americans but didn't get any since America didn't want to intervene into a NATO allies affairs. This led to big disappointments from Kurds all around the world and once again the Kurds were betrayed by the Americans. And finally number one the betrayal of Kurds in Rojava. So if you have watched our previous video you know all about this but if you haven't let's go through it briefly. American forces has with Kurdish ground troops in Rojava been defeating ISIS during the Syrian civil war. The world praised the Kurds who without question was the strongest force against the Islamic State during this time. However, Turkey on the other side of the border sees YPG, the Kurdish force, as a sister group of their main enemy PKK and therefore have threatened and waged war against the society that they are protecting. 6th of October 2019, Donald Trump gave Turkey green light to start their invasion operation in Rojava, something that they couldn't do before since the area was full of American troops. But on an official message from the White House, the withdrawal of the American troops was confirmed. This act has become the 10th time America betrayed the Kurds. The Kurds have an old famous saying, no friends but the mountains. Now more than ever, it's hard to argue that that's wrong.